Hey everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be going over uh, 12112 team seven. Uh, in this problem, we have Chloe. Uh, she writes down 12 copies of one, copies of negative one on this chalkboard. And then her friend Nelson just goes over the chalkboard, uh, figures out every possible combination of those numbers, takes her products, and adds everything that he adds all the products that he wants back together. And then we want to figure out what did Nelson get? Uh, so there are a lot of products. Um, so before we do this problem, we're going to sideline this and I'm going to start talking about a different problem that will help us solve this one. So the one I'm talking about seems like it has not, nothing to do with this problem. I'm gonna say, find the coefficient of x to the fourth in the polynomial x minus one to the 14th x plus one to the power of 12. Uh, so since this is a product, we can use some basically things that we know about products. We can switch around the way you multiply them. So this is just the same as x minus one times x plus one to the power of 12. Basically what we did is we paired every x plus one to an x minus one. And now that we've done that, we have two x minus ones left over. Then by difference of squares, the inside is just x squared minus one to the power of 12 times x squared minus two x plus one. And then expanding this out, this is also equal to x squared times x squared minus one to the power of 12 minus two x, x squared minus one to the power of 12 plus one times x squared minus one to the power of 12. Now we find we want to find the coefficient of x to the fourth in this. So one thing that we can do, right, is we can use basically the binomial theorem. What does the binomial theorem say? Well, that binomial theorem basically just says that the coefficient of a to the k, b to the n minus k in a plus b to the n is just simply n choose k. So then Applying this to here, right? If we're multiplying by x squared, then we want to basically find the x squared in here. So, what is the coefficient of x squared in here? Well, that, uh, we just want to find the coefficient of x squared to the one times negative one to the eleven. Basically, we set k equals one. And so, what is this? This is just simply twelve to one, which is equal to twelve. So we know that like the x squared term in here is if you distribute this out, that just becomes negative 12x squared. So we have a negative 12x squared in here, multiplying that by x squared, we just, this is negative 12x to the fourth, is the power, is the fourth power of x in this first term. In the second term, well, we want to find like an x cubed in here, right? Because then when we multiply by x, that becomes the fourth. But what is the power of x cubed? Well, we can try x squared, but the only thing I give you x cubed is, three to the, is x squared to the three halves, but like that's not an integer. So we can't do that. That basically means that there is no power of x cubed in here. So basically since there's a zero, uh, there's zero x cubes in here, we multiply by that negative two x, you have that the total number of x to the fourths in here is just zero x to the fourths. Finally, for this last one, uh, we want to find a, a coefficient of x to the fourth in here, right? And so what is x to the fourth? Well, x to the fourth is just simply x squared squared times negative one to the power of 10. And so again, using this binomial theorem, we have that, uh, x squared squared, we, that's just k equals two, so that's 12 choose two. What well, is 12 choose two? 12 choose two is just p6. And so if we just multiply this out, right, that's 12 choose two, x squared squared, negative one tenth, which gives us 66 x squared. And so you have 66, sorry, x to the fourth. So you have 66 x to the fourth, and in total, the total number of x to the fourth in this entire polynomial is what well, we just add these together. And so you get 54 x to the fourth. So our answer is simply just 54. 
okay, now we solve this problem. Uh, what exactly does this have to do with our previous? Well, if you solve the contest at all, um, you'll find that 54 is exactly the answer to our original question. So why, how are these two problems related? Well, notice that we calculated the power of x to the fourth in x minus one to the 14, x plus one to the power of 12. Notice that we have 12 copies of one and we have 12 copies of x plus one here. We have 14 copies of negative one and 14 copies of x minus one. Finally, no, notice that like we're trying to find the sum of the products of every set of four of these numbers. Well, we have x to the fourth. So this makes it a really interesting question. Why does do polynomials basically encode this? Well, if you try, for example, to expand x plus a times x plus b using FOIL, what do you get? You get x squared plus ax plus bx plus ab. Then just grouping like terms, we have x squared plus the quantity a plus b, x plus ab. And so if you think about it at a lower level, what is this? This is the sum of every possible product of one number. Then you also have that this term is the sum of every product of two numbers. And so that's just basically what this is, right? Uh, uh, then looking at the coefficient of x to the fourth here, that will largely basically mean the sum of the products of every set of four. In actuality, this isn't what exactly Right here, we have the sum of the product of every two numbers with coefficient of x to the zero. You'll find that the coefficient of x to the 22 is the actual. Power. But I'll leave, I'll leave it to you to discover exactly why this relation holds, why the coefficient of x to the 22 is the same as the coefficient of x to the fourth, and also like how to basically generalize this to high levels. What if you had x plus a times x plus b? times x plus c, does this encode the uh, sum of the products of every set to these numbers, for example? What if you add another one uh, to add four numbers? And then once you see that pattern, is it is things kind of start opening up and you start seeing like the beauty of basically math in general and how uh, algebra relates to this counting problem and uh, everything in general. As a closing remark, uh, in addition to all of this, uh, if you're interested, you should check out Vieta's formulas. Vieta's formulas basically say a lot about the sum and like basically the coefficients of this, right? Here we found the coefficient x, of course. Well, Vieta's basically says a lot about what is the coefficient of any uh, degree of x. And so that's just really interesting. I hope you enjoyed this presentation of this problem. We noticed how like we didn't exactly solve this problem. Uh, we, it was very far from the solution, but the way that you solve this problem, that using polynomials is just a really beautiful solution in my opinion, and it's really nice. Hi everybody, this is Tim. Hope you're enjoying our videos. If so, you know what to do, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that sort of thing. But what I'd really want to invite you to do is to send us an email at media at mathleague.org. Tell us which problems you'd like to see us cover next in our video series. Take care and see you in the next video.